Now, I really don't know what's going on today, but it's July and it's flipping cold. The wind is bonkers. It's so windy. You should, looking out across the bay, the breakers from the wind, the the white horses, as they call them, wow, it's so windy. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. So, um, not a great time to pop down and visit me. If you were ju- if you were just jumping in the car and thinking, I'm going to pop down and see Brett and see how he's doing. Well, it's up to you. You're welcome, of course. However, it is chilly. To the point, you're not going to believe this. I've got a little bit of, I've turned off the air conditioning in the studio and I've let it really warm up because I am, I'm chilly. So, um, look, you've had enough of me moaning and whinging. Let's just crack on, shall we? With it being a Friday, it's the end of the week, of course. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. Thanks for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Please do check out our Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if you could give us a little follow, that would be even better. Also, you can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk and the most important would be if you get a minute to check our Patreon, that would be just amazing. Patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. So now for our latest episode, a bit of comedy, because of course, with it being a Friday, the end of the week, what could be better than a little bit of comedy? It's Steptoe and Son tonight. It's an episode called The Three Feathers, and it was first broadcast on the 27th, oh, oh, what is, I was only like 26 days old on the, when this was broadcast, 27th of February 1972, and I, I was not even a month old. We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Wilfred Bramble as Albert and Harry H. Corbett as Harold. <laughs> this week, the three feathers. Doing down there? Trying to bite your toenails? My yogi exercises. You dirty little man. <laughs> and is it recommended by your guru that you squat on the floor in grubby grey underpants? <laughs> but at least they're holy, ain't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, get up then. Yeah, I can't. I can't move. I'm locked. I've got cramp. My legs are knotted. I've been telling you to get that way for years. I don't just stand there. Undo me. <laughs> How long have you been down here? Since four o'clock. <laughs> that means there's no tea ready. How can I get tea ready like this? You could have rolled out there into the kitchen. <laughs> Aren't you going to undo me? Well, I don't know. How much is it worth? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? In that case, you won't be using your chair again, so uh, may I borrow it to peruse the Financial Times? <coughs> or the FT, as we merchant princes <coughs> calls it. <coughs> oh, yeah. I see the pound is still buoyant on the international exchange. <coughs> oh, 2.54 and uh, 32 seconds. <coughs> 1632 seconds. That isn't bad, is it? 1632. That is a very good improvement. I'll give you a quid. <laughs> After being out on the car all day and coming up with no tea, two quid. 30 bob. 30 shilling to a man of property? <laughs> oh, come, come, Sir Albert, you insult me. Is this your textbook? <laughs> Yoga for beginners. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I see where you went wrong. You forgot to oil yourself. <laughs> it says here that in India, blokes stay like that for weeks, without food or water. I'll leave you there for a couple of weeks, you'll feel much better. <laughs> 35 bob. Well, then again, I could put you on a little trolley and pull you about. 
Yeah, I'll leave you outside the tube station with a begging bowl. <laughs> oh, I'm just for the love of Allah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
wherever they happen to be most needed. I mean, sometimes uh, they'd be on the landing, in the bedroom. Sometimes, when they had a banquet, they used to have them behind a screen in the dining room. You're joking. I'm not. They didn't have any inhibitions like we got today. They didn't think anything of it. I mean, if they got caught short halfway through dinner, <laughs> they used to go behind the screen and nip back in time for the next course. <laughs> that way they wouldn't miss the conversation. What a way to behave at the dinner table. Dirty devils. They weren't dirty devils. That was a la mod. They all did it. Oh, this is an important one, this is. I mean, look at that. On the side of the pole. That is another reason why it is so valuable. What is it? The Prince of Wales' his feathers. <laughs> That's his crest. I bet this was his own one. I should think this originally came from Brighton Pavilion. Prinny's personal privy. <laughs> oh, if only that pole could speak. <laughs> seen a few sights in its time, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, apart from him, there'd be Beau Brumel, Mrs Fitzherbert, Nelson, the Scarlet Pimpernel, all sitting there doing a the Times crossword. <laughs> what a prize. I'll suffer this will go berserk when they see this. Two hundred pounds. Amazing, isn't it? The council give you fifty quid to put in a proper one these days. Oh, well, that's progress. There's only one thing bothers me. What? Well, if it's worth that much money, it doesn't seem right. I only given her £7.10 for it. What are you talking about? Step to Anne's son has always had the reputation of paying fair prices. That's why we've got such a good name in the business. Yeah, and that's why we haven't got any money in the bank. <laughs> no, it's not my fault if people don't know what they're selling. It's bordering on dishonesty. I don't like it. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You were talking through the back of your head. Look, it's dog eat dog in this life, Dad. Do unto others before they do you. I thought you was a socialist. I am a socialist, but that's got nothing to do with it. I don't see why I should suffer just because I'm an idealist. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give her a penny more for it. It's her fault for selling it. Well, I only hope she was a socialist then. She wasn't. She was a Tory. She was as blue as an Eskimo's chuff, that one. <laughs> I mean, she couldn't wait to get rid of it. I don't see any beauty in these things, these people. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, I can't waste any sympathy on them. I mean, they, they get what they deserve. Oh, well, if you behave like that, you must expect it to be done to you. Oh, don't you worry about me. Can't see who it is. Oh, yes, sir, certainly, sir. Ah, shut up. Oi, I would appreciate it if you didn't use that commode while I am gone. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Mr. Steptoe. Yes? I believe this is your card, Steptoe and Son. That is correct. Best prices paid for old antiques. You buy and sell him. You called at my house this morning and bought a Regency commode for my wife. Did I? I think you did. Seven pounds ten you paid her for it. Uh, uh, well, I did purchase a piece of furniture that might or might not be a period piece. Well, it is. Well, that remains to be seen. Is there something wrong? Yes, there is. I'd like to discuss it with you. May I come in? Uh, uh, yes, by, by all means. Would you care to step into the lounge? Uh, this is my partner and father. Good afternoon. How do you do? Can we help you? Oh! There it is. Thank God you haven't sold it. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. My wife should not have sold you this piece. She didn't know the value of it. I'm sorry, I'm afraid. It's not concern of ours. She agreed to price. You took advantage of her. This is a valuable piece of furniture. It's been in my family for years. This is a Regency commode, once the property of the Prince Regent. It originally came from the Brighton Pavilion. You see, Dad, I told you. Yeah. You're an antique dealer. You must have known it was worth more than seven pounds ten. Whether I did or not, there's no bearing on the matter. See, I'm in business, Mr... Uh, uh, Copeland. Oh, it's Copeland. This is your practice, sir. Not at all. It is people like you who bring the antique business into disrespect. See, I told you. Shut up. Going on the knocker, I believe it's called. Terrorising old ladies and innocent housewives into parting with their family heirlooms and paying them a pittance for it. Now, listen, Mush. Mush. 
<laughs> that is a very serious accusation you're making. And these little old ladies you're talking about are the biggest con merchants in the business. I mean, coming out with old their Victorian crap and, and, and trying to kid you it's Georgian. I've been caught a few times, don't worry. We all learn the hard way. You must tell your wife to be more careful in the future. Harold, this isn't the way to conduct business. Please don't, don't interfere. interfere. I must have that piece back. Cecily, I am prepared to sell it to you. Oh. Oh, good. I, I'm quite happy to offer you a reasonable profit. Fifteen pounds. Oh. Very reasonable. Oh, come on now. <laughs> well, we all know what the piece is worth. I see. Sentiment means nothing to you. Market value, I suppose. Very well. I'll not beat about the bush. I want it back. A hundred and fifty pounds. hundred and fifty pounds? How? Oh, well, all right. Don't get out of your prem. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth more than that. Me, he's not doing me now, Fivers. It's a fair price. If you put it into auction, you'll have to pay commission and take a chance on what it fetches. A hundred and fifty. Well, to show you that I am a reasonable man, I'll take it. Uh, will you take a check? Certainly. Not a bad profit for a day's work, is it? That's the way it goes. There you are. Oh. Uh -huh. Ah, I see you bank with coots. <laughs> My father and his friends is often in that condition. <laughs> 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 you know, as coots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. I shall make arrangements to have the commode collected in the morning. Yes, right. No, no need to do that. Miss Sun will bring it round today. No, thank you. I prefer to have it handled by experts. I warn you, if I hear of you trying anything like this again, I shall report you to the Antique Dealers Association. If I were a member, I'd be quite concerned. I'll see myself out. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> 150 quid. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, don't stop, Vetterkin. There's no need to cheat people. What do you mean, cheat people? I bought something for seven pounds ten, and I sold it for a hundred and fifty pounds. That is two thousand percent profits, right? Right. Right. Last week, you bought a suit from that old girl for five bob, and you sold it to that Pakistani across the street for a fiver. <laughs> now, how much profit was that? Four pounds fifteen. No, no, it wasn't. It was two thousand percent. So up you for a start. <laughs> That's not the same thing. Of course it's the same thing. It's not. Everybody was satisfied with my deal. The Pakistani was delighted. It was the first time he'd worn a three-piece Alice Tweed suit in his life. You didn't tell him that plus fours had gone out, did you? <laughs> Poor little devil. I mean, he's only just arrived. What did he know about the way we dress? Look, I saw him yesterday. Plus fours down to just below his knees and bare legs right down to his sandals. <laughs> he looked ridiculous. Oh, he's only got to buy a pair of long socks. <laughs> anyway, Alec Douglas Hume still wears them. Only when he's shooting grass. Not when he's after a job on the buses. Yeah. <laughs> and that is not the point. You took advantage of him. So don't you get on at me. At least I'm taking advantage of people who can afford it and should know better. I mean, they've had a better education than I've had. Hmm? I feel no qualms at all over the way I have conducted myself with the bourgeoisie. And if I get the chance, I shall whoop it up him again. I'll go. And you leave me to run my affairs my own way. I don't need you to tell me what is right and what is wrong. Good afternoon. Are you open? Uh, yeah. We, we never close. A bit like the old windmill, really. Ah, uh, good. Uh, my name is De Vere, uh, my card. Antiques. Huh? Rome and Venice, eh? Yes, I opened out there years ago. That's where the money is, you know. They're buying absolutely everything at the moment, the Italians, as you probably know. Oh, yes. I have noticed them in profusion down the Portobello Road. Mm, well, I ship to Italy by the lorry load. Twice a year I come to England and I load up the old articulated van and send it back over the channel. I always like to have a look around at you chaps. Never know what you might have that would interest our Roman friends. They pay top prices. They're mad about English furniture at the moment. Really? Mm. Well, all the furniture we've got is English. Ah, well, perhaps I might have a look around. Well, of course, of course. It's, it's always a pleasure to deal with the trade. Good. Uh, please, come in. Thank you. Uh, we, we keep all our clean gear in the lounge in here. 
Mm, yes, very interesting. I say, that's rather bizarre. That's my father. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, Peter, this gentleman is an antique dealer from Rome. Is he? He don't look like a wop. Please, Father. <laughs> a little decorum, eh? The gentleman isn't an eye tie. He's English, operating in Rome. As I say, just I mean, this dealt vase is rather amusing, what? Yes, hysterical. Good heavens, that is incredible. What is that commode? Oh, yes, this is exquisite. Oh, this is by Hepplewhite. Is it for sale? Yes. No. Yes. Ah, this is the finest example of a Regency commode I've ever seen. Yes, it does have quite a pleasing line to it, doesn't it? Uh, I don't believe it. The Prince of Wales feathers. Oh. You realise what this must mean? Of course. This was undoubtedly used by the Prince Regent himself. Well, I know that. Are you uh, familiar with the commodes at the Brighton Pavilion? Not personally, no. <laughs> it could quite feasibly be one of them. Ah, it's remarkable. I'll take it. You can't have it. I'll give you six hundred pounds for it. It's already sold. Six hundred pounds? Certainly, I already have a customer. Sophia Lorraine will buy it. Sight unseen. It's sold. It's not. It is. <laughs> Listen, you. <laughs> uh, would you excuse us a moment, please, Mr. Mm. De Vere? Of course. <laughs> if you don't mind your own business, so help me. You'll have to get a full set of gums as well. <laughs> Silly Gerald, it's against the rules. I'll make like my own rules. <laughs> I do beg your pardon, Mr. DeVille. <laughs> my father is a little old fashioned about these things. Yes, well, of course, if you have already sold the piece, there's nothing more to be said. I wouldn't want to do anything unethical. Oh, no, 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 no. It's quite above board. It's a, a, a misunderstanding. I can easily get it sorted out. Well, I'm very interested in this piece. Look, I shall call back in two days to ascertain if it is for sale. It will be. It will be. Good day to you. Oh, oh permit me to show you out. Yeah. Oh, there, there will be no trouble. You see, the man who bought it, uh, he doesn't really want it. You see, his wife can't stand the sight of it. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Huh? I assure you, I wouldn't be party to anything unethical. I mean, I value my reputation above all else. As we all do. I shall buy it back off him. I'll offer him an handsome profit. I'm sure he'll be amenable. Tell Mrs. Loren the commode is as good as hers. Well, if you can establish sole title to the piece, we have a deal. Please, now, do your best to get it. It's a superb example. If necessary, I, uh, I might even go, uh, higher than 600. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Don't worry, I'll get it, I'll get no, it. I hope so. <laughs> Goodbye. Come on, come on. <sighs> Who are you looking at? A stranger. That's who I'm looking at. Oh, are you? Well, I bet you remember who I am by payday. <laughs> oh, the commode's still here, then. I thought Roman Fred was coming back yesterday. Oh, well, well, he's a very busy man. I mean, I'm not the only one he deals with. He's probably scouring the country. He's probably left the country. What do you mean? Well, if he was so keen to buy it, he would have been back, wouldn't he? Stands you in at a lot of money now, doesn't it? Not really. The bloke you brought it from in the first place has you by the short and curlies, didn't he? 350 quid you had to pay him to get it back. How did you know? I thought you left the room because you was disgusted. You was at the keyhole, wasn't you? Couldn't wait to write the cheque out, could you? Well, I was naturally eager to complete the transaction. And you had to make it out to cash as well. That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Well, of course not. I mean, he explained that. See, when he's selling, he prefers the money not to pass through his account. as to avoid the possibility of income tax. I don't understand what he means. It's a quite normal fiscal procedure amongst three businessmen. So it stands you in at £357.10 now? No, it doesn't. Because I banked his cheque for the 150 straight away the same afternoon. I'm not daft, you know. So at this precise moment of time, this commode has cost me the sum of £207.10. 
And as I'm about shortly to sell it for £600, I'm quite satisfied, thank you. Honestly, you're so dim at times, aren't you? You really are. You're as thick as Mick Jagger's bottom lip. <laughs> you can't see it, can you? What? You've been conned. Rubbish. You have. You've been turned over. They've had your trousers down. They're all in it together. Who are? Oh, go. The Berger bought it off, the so-called husband, the Italian bloke. Look, they've got this commode, see? They can't sell it to you for what it's worth because you wouldn't buy it. So, she lets you think you've nicked it off her for seven and a half quid. Now, her husband turns up, all indignant, shouting the odds that you've got a valuable commode you only paid seven pound ten for. And to show you how valuable it is, he's willing to buy it back off you at a profit. No, you know it's worth money. You get sucked in and sell it back to him for 150 quid. You're well pleased. Of course. Now they move in for the kill. Another bloke turns up, this time an antique dealer, an expert. He goes all frothy when he sees it. I must have it. I must have it. So he gets all your juices working away by offering you four times what you've already sold it for. Providing you can buy it back off the first bloke. Are you still with me? Yes. No. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> now, they've got you. You, little pound signs jumping up and down in your eyeballs. You can't wait for the first bloke to come back and nick it back off him again. Greedy. That's what they count on. People wanting something for nothing. So, the first bloke comes back next morning. Of course, he doesn't want to sell. Surprise, surprise. <gasps> You've got to offer him £350 before he agrees to sell. You give him a cash cheque, he nips straight round to your bank and cashes it, and you never see any of them again. Simple. Like shelling peas. And you fell for it. Peter... I have never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. <laughs> when did you work all that out? Last night. I was doing me yoga, meditating. <laughs> and I saw it all in a flash. <laughs> <laughs> They've taken him to the cleaners, they have, I thought. And serve the greedy little swine right. Very clever. You're a proper little Agatha Christie, aren't you? Yeah. Except for two things you've overlooked, Agatha. I have already banked the first cheque, A, for £150, and B, I still have possession of a very valuable Regency commode. And you've overlooked two things as well. A, I phoned the bank this morning and that cheque hasn't stopped bouncing around the bank since you put it in. Uh -huh. And B, while you was out, I got a bloke down to value the commode. <laughs> and? £7.10. Huh? Made this year. He's looked at 14 of them this week. They're all over the district. You've been sucked in, mate, and blown out in bubbles. Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I've lost 357 pounds, ten. It's your own fault. I've no sympathy. If you hadn't been so greedy, they wouldn't have been able to work it. The fight? The fight? I could have sworn it was genuine. I mean, everything pointed to it. Everything I have been told. Uh, never mind. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Help you to cut your losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? Well, I wouldn't mind having that in my bedroom. Come in handy of a cold night. <laughs> I'll buy it all for you. How much? Three pound ten. Three pound ten? It's worth twice that much. Four pound. Six pound ten. Four pound fifteen, and that's me last offer. I'll tell you what. Four pounds seventeen and six, without the Poe. <laughs> what are you going to do with the Poe? I'm going to take it down to the GLC antique appreciation classes. Cause I thought the class might appreciate it when I smash it right over the teacher's rotten head. Good night. You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son with Douglas Blackwell and Leslie Heritage. Written and adapted for radio by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson and produced by Bobby J. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Steptoe and Son. 
And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, going live at 5 p.m. GMT. What are you doing for dinner tomorrow night? I'm thinking, as you know, uh, if you're a regular listener, my favourite restaurant in the whole world is a little restaurant in beer in Beer High Street called The Smuggler's Kitchen. And it is my favourite. And I'm thinking maybe, do I or do I not pop in there tonight for a little a little, little feast? Be nice, wouldn't it? All right, well, we'll see how it goes. If you want to support us on our supporter page, that would be patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And uh, look, thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.